These people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. Uh, an anesthesiologist um, intubated the patients, like I think it was right, uh, bran like bronchi and of a patient and they couldn't get the sats up and for about five hours like we were waiting on a chest x-ray to confirm that the placement was wrong and in the meantime while we're waiting for that and we've told the anesthesiologist that it was placed wrong because like literally only one side of his fucking chest is like inflating um he dies okay um a patient had a heart rate of 40 and the resident <laughs> started doing chest compressions on him, which is not what you do. You just externally pace them or you, you know, give him some atropine. And then, you know, I run in there to stop him from doing chest compressions on somebody with a fucking pulse. And then he decides to push Epi. He throws some pads on them, on him to, to defibrillate the guy in bradycardia. Okay. He has a heart rate of 40 in a stable, you know, bradycardic rhythm, we just need to give him some, like some atropine and pace him. He fucking defibrillates him and kills him. And I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there. And I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. Okay. There was a nurse who played it, placed an NG tube into, um, into some guy's lungs and filled his lungs with tube feeding. There was a nurse who confused uh, a long acting insulin with a short acting acting insulin and gave 30 units of a fast acting insulin and killed the guy. <sighs> what else? Other stuff have I seen? Yeah, it's just here they're just gonna let them rot on the vent. They're medically mismanaging these patients. And like, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not professing to be a doctor by any means. But there's, like I said, basic standards of care that we have to do. Like, when somebody's low on blood, like literally on the brink of a critical low blood level, we should replace the blood. But I asked the residents and they're like, does he have internal bleeding? And I said, no. Then they're like, well, we're not replacing the blood. Well, here's the thing. In these COVID patients, they all eventually need a blood transfusion. Their blood, like, if you don't have enough blood to actually oxygenate your body, the vent settings don't fucking matter, okay? <laughs> they don't matter because you have no oxygen carrying capacity of your blood, okay? <sighs> I told you about the patient where, like, all that, like, purulent drainage just kept seeping into his lungs because the ET tube cuff w was leaking and nobody has a fucking manometer here to check the pressures. And I finally figured that out. And I kept saying, hey, you know what? His white blood cell count is steadily, like, you know, we're having a problem with it. Like, do you want to start some antibiotics? No. Well, does he have a fever? And I said, no, he doesn't have a fever. They didn't want to start antibiotics. Day shift nurse finally got a chest x-ray. He has full-blown pneumonia now. Like, I've been telling them this for a while, but because he didn't have a fever, they didn't want to give him antibiotics. <sighs> we have a nurse who, like, fell asleep at the fucking nurse's station while we were all in rooms, and her norepinephrine ran out, and the guy had no fucking blood pressure and didn't perfuse his brain, and I'm pretty sure he's brain dead. That same nurse is now running a CRRT machine, a dialysis-like machine, that she has never done before. She said she'll figure it out, okay? I'm pretty fucking smart, and I figure a lot of shit out, but I would never attempt to try and figure out a CRRT machine on the fly. Like, we are adequately staffed. There's a shit ton of staff in there, like, and we have a nurse who does CRRT in there. She has a different patient load. We told them, like, hey, let's just swap these nurses so the one that knows how to work this machine can work this machine, but they didn't want to do that. So I'm pretty sure that patient will be dead here in a couple hours. And this is why I freaked the fuck out yesterday. Because nobody is listening. They don't care what is happening to these people. They don't. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. Like, literally, 
some of these people are just on sedation to keep them on the vents. Nothing else. I have a lady on a trank on a vent, and she's not even fucking cognizant. She's not even on sedation. You know what we give her every day? We give her breathing treatments, albuterol, and uh, she gets uh, insulin. And that's it. That's it. We're not treating the COVID, guys. Like, for real, we're not treating the COVID. <sighs> you know, every day we try and get these guys off the vents, right? Because, you know, there's criteria for weaning. Every day, the day shift nurse will wean them down, like, to, like, minimum sedation. <sighs> every night, we come in and we get the same two residents and they fucking max out all the sedation again and undo all the work from the day shift. Then the day shift attending will come in and they'll all do rounds and they'll be like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent. So we had to turn all the sedation on. And I'm like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent because it's in the wrong vent mode. So, I legit don't even know what to do anymore. Like, I tried calling advocacy groups. I tried talking with management here, like the nursing admin. Like nothing, nobody's doing anything. We still have a 100% mortality rate in the ICU unit. I would just left. But, I mean, they're living longer because we have, like, legit ICU nurses there. So, CDC finally, like, not the CDC, FDA approved yesterday the remdesivir study. Like, to start using remdesivir for uh, COVID patients. Guys, I don't even know what to do anymore. And this is why it had a complete fucking breakdown. Like, I literally had to call my friend Lisa and FaceTime her and she answered the fucking phone while she was in the shower because she, like, knew I was having a hard time to talk to her because it's like going in the fucking twilight zone. Like, everyone here is okay with this. Look, the only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is going to be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with, is like if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good, this is bad, this is wrong, we should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there, you're doing a great job, you can't save everybody, you're, you know, you're amazing, you're a great nurse. Guys, I know I'm a fucking good nurse. I know I go in there and I give it 500% every day. I know I'm not being negligent. Okay? I fucking know that. What I need is someone to help me save these people from being killed. Okay? From gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. And no one is listening to me. Like, for real, nobody's listening. Like, I legit don't know what to do anymore. Can someone come up with, like, some type of a solution for me? Because I'm kind of out of ideas. You know what I mean? And try and talk with some of the other nurses here. And they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me. And they all just shake their heads. And I'm like, am I the only one who is not a sociopath? To think that this is okay? I mean, guys, they literally don't even know when they're dead. Like, how many times have I told you they've assigned me a dead person? <laughs> like, how long have they been dead? Nobody knows. <laughs> like, how is anybody assessing anything without a stethoscope? Normally we have, like, those disposable stethoscopes. 
But I knew what we were coming into, so I brought my old chunky one. Nobody, nobody has listened to anybody's lungs as long as I've been here. Even with disposable stethoscopes. I am literally telling you that they're murdering these people. And nobody will listen to me. I mean, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that when you defibrillate somebody with a heartbeat of 40 in a stable rhythm and you kill them, that's murder. And I'm pretty sure that when you put somebody's peep up to, like, 25 and peep doesn't go past, I think, like, 15, 20, and you, you blow their lungs out and they die, I'm pretty sure that's murder. <sighs> You know, I mean, I've just watched a doctor drop a central line and fucking rupture, like, the sub, like, clavian, like, vein, and the guy fucking bled to death. I mean, COVID didn't break that central line. COVID didn't kill that guy. I mean, he was a COVID patient. I mean, every single patient I've taken care of, guys, is a COVID patient. Like, I've never had a non-COVID patient, Okay. <laughs> I watched an anesthesiologist place an ET tube and rush for their esophagus and the guy choked to death on his own blood. Ah, COVID didn't place that ET tube incorrectly. And nobody cares because they're all minorities and we're in the fucking hood. You know, and that's just not okay. You know, I grew up really poor. And so I know what it's like to be, like, completely forgotten and for nobody to advocate for you. I'm sitting in the vending machine room. Because it's nice and cool. I'm in between units right now, so they haven't realized I'm gone. I figured I'd have a mini meltdown and then get my shit together because I've never been to the other unit. <laughs> Mind you, I've been on this unit the whole time. Whatever, I'm flexible. But once again, you know, I talked to admin. The next day I got moved. That's what happened at the other hospital. They don't care what's happening to these people. And I just have to keep watching them die. 